Candace Owens, who recently was just photographed at one of Kanye West's fashion shows, standing side by side with him, um, wearing a White Lives Matter shirt, because that's who she is. Uh, she's now, I guess, buddy buddy with Kanye West, uh, who is in the midst of yet another public breakdown where he's making wild accusations, including saying Hillary Clinton broke up his marriage because she had the ear of, uh, of his wife, Kim Kardashian, which is why they got a divorce. Not in the best place, I would say, as a divorced guy, Kanye West also has just increasingly gone, had terrible politics throughout the years, including this new latest attention seeking stunt with with uh, with this White Lives Matter shirt and then capped off with vile anti-Semitic tweets in which he said that he wanted to, quote, go death con three on Jewish people in all caps. Candace Owens now goes out of her way to defend this blatant anti-Semitism. And I just, we're going to have to pause this a few times throughout this clip because there are so many layers of bullshit here that we need to thoroughly, de thoroughly debunk it. Here she is, Candace Owens, defending her new buddy, Kanye West. That was the tweets. And people subsequently demanded that the tweet be taken down for anti-Semitism. Now, if you are an honest person, you did not think this tweet was anti-Semitic. You did not think that he wrote this tweet because he hates or wants to genocide Jewish people. This does not represent the beginning of the Holocaust. That's if okay. you're an honest person. You'll Pause it. So notice, this is when you're dealing with a dishonest person, the kind of argument that they're going to present. She exaggerates the claims that are being made by people who saw the tweet that says, I am going to go death con three on Jewish people. The funny thing is I can't actually be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. Okay, whatever. I mean, obvious, obvious, obvious anti-Semitism. So then she pretends like what the left is saying and how they're dishonest is that we are claiming that he's going to start the Holocaust, right? Or maybe she said that, says that later, but that um, a war is going to start over this. No one said that. No one said that. They said this was an anti-Semitic comment. And what honest people don't do is deliberately take out context, historical context, societal context from their readings of what people say and what something like, say, white lives matter means, right? You know, on its face, okay, white lives matter. But what is the context behind that? It's a way to discount the movement for black lives. And they deliberately obscure that so they can maintain a racist hierarchy and so now she's saying the bar is wanting to genocide jewish people no one said kanye said that he said an anti-semitic comment and that's what is being criticized here she's talking about honesty as she completely misrepresents everything about this story within the first 15 seconds of her commentary on this I, right i mean let's listen a little more because there's a, a specific line i want to get to from her okay cool was anti-Semitic. You do not think that he wrote this tweet because he hates or wants to genocide Jewish people. This does not represent the beginning of the Holocaust. That's if you're an honest person, you'll meet that. You, you will admit that, right? If you're an honest person, Total when you read this tweet, you had no idea what the hell he was talking about. I had, I had no idea when I read this tweet what the hell he was talking about. Now playing dumb. This tweet inspired questions, not answers. First and foremost, what is Death Con 3? Did he mean DEF CON 3, which would be a military defense position, not an offense for those of you that are offended? <laughs> okay, military... pause this. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I didn't hear that part yet. That is, <laughs> that is rich, rich. Listen, Kanye just wants to defend himself from the mm. Jews. <laughs> He's going to go on the offense, okay? We need a defense system because of the all oh, the Jewish devils coming after me. I mean, listen, come on, this is ridiculous. And everyone, if you didn't know, I mean, this is this is this is ridiculous. Like, okay, if you didn't know what he was talking about, it doesn't matter. He still <laughs> said something very anti-Semitic. You don't need the context of him leaking his own DMs back and forth with P. Diddy, where P. Diddy was basically like, listen, we gotta meet over like uh 
Kanye, something obviously being wrong with Kanye and Kanye being like, I don't remember exactly what Kanye said, but it was something like, when are you going to stop letting like your Jewish masters have a hold over you or something like that? Uh, that was the, the, maybe not the exact terminologies, but that was what he was saying. And um, of course, speaking. Man, we're having connectivity issues today. Damn. To the point that B that Bender was making there. Um, it, it just she's she's going down some sort of conspiracy rabbit hole with this where she's trying to look into the heart of Kanye West and see did he mean DEFCON oh well that's a defensive position I don't know Candace you were just side by side with him in a white lives matter shirt why don't you give him a goddamn call and ask him as opposed to just running cover for him in the most embarrassing example of that as humanly possible uh, let's let's keep watching I had, I had no idea when I read this tweet what the hell he was talking about. This tweet inspired questions, not answers. First and foremost, what is Death Con 3? Did he mean Death Con 3, which would be a military defense position, not an offense for those of you that are offended, a military defense position? Is he tweeting this because he's reading the Newsweek headline, calling him an anti-Semitic? Is he angry because he can't believe that he's not free to talk about people in his life who happen to be Jewish, right, without being accused of anti-Semitism? Is he saying, I'm not going to shut up and I'm going to keep tweeting and I'm going to keep calling these people out, referring to his friends that he feels slighted by? Is he talking about Jerry Kushner and Josh Kushner? If you're a liar, you'll say, I know I was scared, Candace. I actually thought that Kanye West was going to launch a military strike in Israel because that's the reaction. Like when I woke up and I looked at the headlines, the reaction was like Kanye West had gotten together a military strike and it was going to go forward in the morning time in Israel. That was that was the reaction that was met with this tweet. Now, once again, I want to make this very clear. This is not a defense of his tweet. This is an open question, which never seems to happen anymore. Have him on. Like, you cannot even say the word Jewish without people getting upset in the same way that you're not allowed to say black anymore. In the same way that if you talk about the struggles of black Americans and you talk about the people in black America, like Patrice Cullors, the founder of Black Lives Matter, who are harnessing emotions to enrich their pockets, right? Uh, I mean, she's just, uh, thank God we have you back. Uh, I was I was about to maybe pull a Sam and get really mad at technology. But um, but like the 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 uh, this is so silly, right? We hear what we know what she's doing. She's trying to uh, to make this all about some faux hysteria. And she keeps bringing it back to the straw man about how uh, was the reaction was proportionate to Kanye West launching a military strike in Israel. And by the way, notice how right wingers don't seem to really acknowledge that Jewish people exist outside of Israel, because for their purposes, the only reason they care about Israel is because it's a vehicle to the uh, the Armageddon that will eventually uh, bring Jesus back and I forget the details of it, but it's just it, the Jewish people will end up getting wiped out so that the true Christians can ascend to heaven or whatever the case is, whatever garbage uh, they believe in. But this is why Israel is being uh, is constantly used as a prop for the right wing. They don't acknowledge that in the United States, Jewish people are some of the most progressive voters in the country and that right. uh, they are not supportive of when you poll uh Jewish people more broadly, the extreme and uh, apartheid measures uh, in Israel. But yeah, I mean, she's she's an actress. I don't even can't, I can't even believe that she decided to to defend this like this. I mean, that's exactly it. You hit the nail on the head. They never acknowledge Jewish people in the U.S. because Jewish people in the U.S. are are progressive or leftists or at the very least Democrats. And we're talking like literally the vast majority. I'm not going to put a number on it, but it honestly feels like like 95 percent of Jews in the U.S. Um, have that lean, those political leanings. And um, that's why they have to go with Israel whenever they bring up uh, Jews under attack, because that's a right wing state. Israel is a right wing uh, government has a right-wing government and um first of all no one was worried about israel based on kanye's comments yeah in fact the real threat is to jews in the u.s because kanye west is probably still one of the 
biggest entertainers in the United States. And if just one of his fans listens to what he says about Jewish people and decides to go out and take something into their own hands and attack a Jewish person, um, then that's a very real, very real attack on a, on a person that's actually in the line of fire, whatever it may be. No one's no no Kanye fan has the ability to attack the state of Israel. <laughs> but what they could do is go knock on their neighbor's their Jewish neighbor's house down the street and slug him in the face or worse. And we've seen a rise in anti-Semitic hate crimes recently. And that is a result of this kind of rhetoric. And so this is what it actually means to be concerned about anti-Semitism as it is as it in what it means pra practically for Jewish Americans and Jewish people more broadly in the world. And what the right does when they mention Israel or when they use anti-Semitism as a cudgel against the left, uh, say, when they're attacking Rashida Tlaib or Ilhan Omar for speaking out against Israeli apartheid and uh, repression of Palestinians and occupation, is they're using that as a way to attack progressive members, the left in Congress, and also because their support for Israel is really just a useful vehicle for them to hate Muslims, and that is, and brown people in Palestine, in the Middle East more broadly, um, and here domestically, when you have a Palestinian American like Rashida Tlaib speaking out on behalf of uh, Palestinian rights and Ilhan Omar, who is a Muslim woman, uh, and they used to they choose to attack her with immense bigotry. You doing that through the lens of combating anti-Semitism as they support Trump, who's talking about globalists, and as Candace Owens is defending this garbage, is just a, a way for them to have cover a an artificial morality that shrouds them in some sort of righteousness as they are as bigoted as humanly possible going after Muslims and brown people. That's all it is. Right. Right. And also, Kanye, uh, I mean, this was the line I was waiting for from her, that uh, you can't say the word Jewish. I mean, Kanye said a lot more than just the word Jewish. It was the, yeah. it was the stuff that surrounded the word Jewish. That was the problem. I mean, you could say Jewish all you lo you'd like. You could say black all you'd like. It's those those words before it and preceding it that depends on whether it's anti-Semitic or right. racist or not. <laughs> we said it a lot in this segment in reference to combating anti-Semitism. Kanye said it. As an anti-Semite, that's the yes. difference, Candace. It's yes. not that hard. Right.